Thank you for tuning in to the best parenting show on the internet. Post Daily Dose. Hey, good evening, Facebook family. Welcome to another episode of Post Daily Dose with me, your trusted parenting advisor, faithful guidance servant on the healing journey. What's my name? Big Papa Brian Post. Happy freaking fabulous Friday. Freaking fabulous Friday. Freaking fabulous Friday. If you guys are as tired as I am, then you are so happy to see Friday. Just because it means the end of the day. Not necessarily because it's a celebration of the end of the week, because... Today is another wonderful, blessed day, and I kind of, you know, I'm kind of a thank God it's Monday kind of guy. But, um, yeah, it's Friday, and I'm tired, and I'm ready to be done for the day, and this is uh, my last little task. I'm not doing anything else after this. Well, I'm actually going to do a few things, but I'm going to stop thinking. How about that? I'm going to stop thinking. But before I stop thinking, before I shut it all the way down, hello, Colton Davis, and hello, Mimi. Before I shut it all the way down, I'm going to leave you with a thought. That's kind of heavy for a Friday. And here it is. When stress goes up, vibration goes deep. Vibration stirs deep. When stress goes up, vibration stirs deep. Hello there, Michelle Moore. So here's the thing. Here's here's how I want to frame this for you. You guys know that trauma is stored in the brain. Your trauma that you experience along with your is, is stored in the same area as your personality traits. So when you've experienced trauma, it's stored at this really unconscious base of your brain and it just sits there. And anytime you become stressed, so when stress goes up, then what happens is the vibration of the stress goes deep into the brainstem. The higher the stress, the deeper the vibration into the brainstem, which means the higher the stress, the deeper the vibration into the brainstem Therefore, the more likely you are to stir the old trauma. This is for children and for adults. Now, day in and day out, just like traffic. I just got home. There's some traffic. And I'm like, you know, it's a lot of traffic. But it's, it's stressful because it's traffic. It's not stressful because it's not stressful enough to make me have a trauma reaction. It's not stressful enough to make me feel completely overwhelmed. I had to have had at least one episode with one unkind adult this week. Let me think. You know when you go to a store and you encounter that person who's waiting on you and they're in a foul mood? That's stressful. It doesn't feel good. But it doesn't really stir you at that really deep level. But when you have a situation with your child now that's stressful so it's time for dinner your child won't get off their video game you're tired already it's been a long day you spent a long time preparing dinner you want to be perfect for everyone and now your child won't get off their video game and won't come sit down to dinner and in that moment you feel you feel so devalued you feel so taken for granted you feel so not good enough and you just, you like, you set this whole thing up. So all of a sudden what's happening is the stress. And then, so then you go back to your child because now you're feeling some kind of way. So you go back to your child. You say, I said, it's time for dinner. I spent all day cooking this dinner. You're going to come in here. No, I'm not. So boom, boom, big blow up. Stress goes way up. Now what happens when stress starts to go up like that, our amygdala hijacks us, sends our vibration down into the bottom of the brainstem. The bottom of the brainstem is where all the murky, ugly, yucky, ugh, ugh, hard feelings and experiences and trauma are at. 
That's where all the muck is at. It's way down there deep. So when you get into this little exchange with your child and the stress jacks up, all of a sudden, guess where you guys are at? You guys are then in the mud. You're stuck in the mud and all the mud's just getting stirred up. It's like having a it's like having a glass of water and having dirt in it. Over time, the dirt set it to the bottom. But if you stir it a little, the dirt just stirs, it just gets a little bit worked up. But if you stir it really fast, it's like the whole glass turns brown. That's what happens with stress and that's what happens with trauma. So when that stress goes up and that amygdala hijacks our brain, then it goes down and it stirs all that trauma. And then all that trauma comes up and completely changes like our reptile lens just comes over our eyes our reptile brain comes over our eyes because all that and in that place in that place we interact and we engage with on with one another and it feels really yucky and it feels really shameful and it feels really rejection rejecting it feels really insecure and it makes us feel really abandoned and really helpless and we are just mired in it, mucking it up, and it is just yucky, yucky, yucky. And then when the situation is all done, we feel really bad. We feel really shame. We we're like, that didn't have to happen. That didn't have to get like that. Why did I care? Why didn't I not? Why, why didn't I just leave him on his video game? Because usually he's not very pleasant at dinner anyway. I mean, why did I make a big deal of it? And then you realize, if you're really honest with yourself, you realize it had a lot more to do with you and all that muck that gets stirred up than it did with your kid not getting off the video games and coming to eat dinner. And that is a negative feedback loop. And that's what we do when we get stressed. And I want you to go into this weekend thinking about that. When stress goes up, the vibration stirs deeper. When the stress goes up, the vibration stirs deeper. And when the stress is high and the vibration is stirring really deep, no one is sane. No one's in their right mind. Everyone's thinking is confused and distorted. Everyone's short-term memory is shut off. It's just not fun. It's just yucky. Now here's the thing, when our children's stress goes up, which is an invitation for our stress to go up, we have to not allow ourselves to vibrate deep. And that's what breathing allows you to do. That's what taking the step back allows you to do. That's what, that's what slowing down allows you to do. That's what turning around, walking in the opposite direction allows you to do. That's what praying allows you to do. Just start praying because all of a sudden you're preventing yourself from stirring deep. And when you, when you prevent yourself from stirring deep, here's what happens. And I'm going to answer that, Don. Here's what happens. When you prevent yourself from stirring deep and your child's stress is escalating, which means they're vibrating deep, then they're looking at you in that moment. And all that vibration, that deep vibration that's being stirred by them, changes their lens it changes what they're seeing and they're looking at you and they are expecting you to be a threat you are a threat in that moment whether you do anything or not you're a threat now if you don't stir deep you're able to hold a present experience and that ex present experience basically says i'm not going to hurt you i'm not going to be the bad person in your life right now and it makes me really sad that you're feeling the way you're feeling right now because i don't want that in our relationship and i'm sorry it keeps showing up but i'm not going to do that i'm not going to be that person and then eventually that's a positive feedback loop that's responding in a positive way to a negative state eventually that negative state has to go down it has to reduce okay so that's why it's important for us as parents and as adults to not stir deep when stress gets high. If we can keep ourselves from stirring deep, and the only reason we stir deep is because we, we drop into our own to our own feedback loops. I have some friends, family visiting, and they have a little doggy, and he's wanting to go in the house. So the only reason that we actually end up reacting instead of responding is because we start stirring deep. Now Don says, once that happens, how do you repair the damage? Okay, perfect, perfect question. First of all, what you have to understand 
is we all get stirred deep. We all get stirred deep at some point. We all lose our minds. We all act like cave people at some point in time, duking it out, yelling, screaming, acting crazy. We all do it. The key is whether you can see it, even if it happens after the fact, if you can see it, if you can look at it, and you can learn from it, and you can take responsibility and just say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I quite literally lost my shit. I lost my shit, and I'm sorry. And your kid says, leave me alone. I'm still mad at you. And you say, you should be, and I'm sorry. And you turn around and you walk away because they're really not mad at you. Their feelings are just a little bit hurt because they know they've lost their shit too, right? But we have to own our adult responsibility before we can teach our children how to be responsible. It's imperative. You can't teach a child to be responsible if you're not willing to model responsibility. As long as you're modeling reactivity and getting your shit stirred all deep because stress, the stress goes high, that's all they're going to learn. They're going to just learn how to be reactive. We're not teaching them anything different. But when stress consistently goes up high and we don't allow ourselves to stir deep, pretty soon we end up holding a presence that allows them to work through their challenges. That's how you create a therapeutic environment. That's how you as the parent, as the adult in your child's life becomes the single most powerful healing force in all of their experience. That's how you help them through their stuff. So what do you do once it happens? How do you repair the damage, Don? Is all you gotta do is apologize. You apologize, you say, I'm sorry, and I'm gonna do better. And hold yourself accountable to actually do better. That's what you do. Happy freaking fabulous Friday, guys. Freaking fabulous Friday. Enjoy your evening. Beautiful evening here. Didn't get bit by a mosquito. Fantastic. God bless you. Big Papa loves you. Remember, in any given situation, you always have two choices. You can continue to react from the same blueprints of stress, fear, and overwhelm, which is the stirred deep. That's the stir deep. When the stress increases, when the stress goes up, the stress vibration stirs deep. And that's where all the yuckies at. Or you can stop, you can slow down, you can take three to ten deep breaths, and you can choose love. And that's that prevention. You don't allow yourself to get, get too deep. We all get a little worked up. Don't allow yourself to get all the way down, stirred all the way down at the bottom. We've got to be able to do this. You and I, as adults, before we can expect our children to do it. That's what modeling is. That's what we do. That's how you change your child's brain. You change your child's brain through repetitive modeling experiences. That's what we do. Happy Friday. I think I'll see you guys on Monday. I'll be flying. But I think I'll be on the ground back in San Francisco about our usual time. If not, I'll see if I can convince Christy to come drop some pearls on you. All right, guys. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.